So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the persona style in Comfy UI, where it's just one character, but with multiple different emotions. And I'm also going to be showing you how to take these emotions and put them in Unity. So I'll have a demo project, which you can use for your character portraits, which you make. And all the links and the project files will be linked somewhere in the description below. So to begin, the two main components of this workflow is the P5 portrait Laura file. Now this is what's going to give us the persona style effect. And the other important part of the workflow is this counterfeit V30. Now you can use other ST1.5 models, but I found this one to be the one that gave the best results. So over here, I have a simple prompt. And now if I click Q prompt, now this was the image that was generated and it looks pretty good, but I want to improve this workflow somewhat. So, so far we're relying on the actual prompt itself to create the style of the actual character. But what I want to do is to be able to upload an image of a person and use that to actually influence the actual output image. So to do this, I'm going to be using the IP adapter face plus model. I won't be going over how to install it today. If you look online, you'll find multiple resources about how to install it. But if you already have it installed, what you need to do is just go into your comp UI and type in the IP adapter unified loader face ID. Then you need the actual IP adapter. And finally, you will need the load image. When you get the load image node, what you want to do is actually load an image of a person's face and then connect all the nodes together. And for the face ID model, use the V2 model and also make the lower strength to something like 0.7. And now if I click Q prompt, we can see that we've sort of recreated the character's likeness within the actual output image. And just a little tip, when you do upload the person that you want to use for your input image, what you want to do is also make that the actual prompt matches the actual image itself. So if this person has white hair, make sure that the prompt also says white hair as well. It'll make things much easier. Because for example, if I change the image and now click Q prompt without changing the actual prompt, the actual output image is a lot less likely to resemble the input image. Now back to the original image, what I want to do is now take this image and recreate it, but with multiple different emotions like they do in Persona. So to do this is quite simple. What we want to do is now use this image as an input. So what you want to do is now go and click load image. Make sure that you've loaded the correct image. Use VAE encode and set latent noise mask and now connect all the nodes together. Now there's two more things that you want to do before we start generating our images. And the first one is actually making a mask for our load image. And this is because we don't want to recreate the whole image, but rather just the character's face. So to do this, you want to right click open in mask editor. Once you've got it open in mask editor, what you want to do is start painting the face. Now, ideally you want to cover as little as possible. So from the eyebrows to the mouth, you don't want to draw on the entire whole face. And the reason for this is because it will make your character a lot less consistent because ConfUI will start recreating the actual face shape as well, which may lead to some inconsistent results. Now, once you've finished painting the face, what you want to do is click save to node. And now in the prompt itself, what you want to do is in the negative prompt, take out the angry and expressionless prompt. Now we only had that in the original workflow just to make our character look a bit more positive when we're generating the first workflow. So now you can take this out and what you want to do now in the positive prompt, you want to put in the actual emotion that you want your character to express. So for example, I'm going to put in the word sad. And one final thing before we generate is I'm going to lower the denoising strength. So I'm going to lower it to something like 0.8 and then click OK and now click Q prompt. Now this was the output image. Now, normally all your results won't be perfect and that's to be expected. As you can see here, the eyes are a little bit messed up, but 90% of the work is done. And if you really wanted to, you could go in Illustrator on something and actually sort out the problem areas. But for now, I'm just going to keep generating until I get a semi-decent looking image. Now, this is the image that was generated. I got this around about on the third, fourth try, and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back and change the emotion. So this time I'm going to do happy and then click Q prompt. Now this was the image that was generated. The eyebrows are slightly messed up, but overall it's a pretty good image. And so that's the basic workflow for getting persona style portraits. Now I'm going to actually show you how to take these portraits and put them into Unity in a demo project. Now what I've done is made three images, one happy, one sad, one angry. And now we're going to begin the process of 
getting them ready for Unity. Now, the first thing we have to do is actually remove the white background from them. And you could do this online pretty easily, but if you want to do it in ConfiUI, there is a simple workflow that you can use. And this workflow is simple to use and I'll link it below. And what it does is just basically remove the background of an image. And what you want to do is just take those images that you have and start removing the backgrounds. Now, these are all my three images without backgrounds. And now I'm going to open up Unity and use them in a demo project. Now in Unity, what you want to do is create a new folder and call it faces. And you want to drag in the actual faces that you made into this folder. And they should appear like this and make sure the texture type is Sprite 2D and UI. Next thing you want to do is create a canvas. So to do that, you go on UI and then click on canvas and then right click on the canvas and then click on image and then right click the canvas again and then click on text. Now, actually, if you scroll out, you should be able to see your text and your actual image object. So scroll out fully. And what you want to do is just adjust the image and text sizes and make them bigger so that it fits more better in the actual canvas. And for text, what you want to make sure that you do is that as well as expanding it, you also want to increase the text size. So I'm going to do something like 100. And if I click play, you can see it looks something like this. So now I have new text and the image object. And I'm just going to change the actual color to a more darker black. And that should make the text much more readable. Now, the final thing that you want to do is right click and then click on create then C sharp script, and we're going to call this the dialogue manager. Once you've named it, then you're going to double click to open it. Now, this is what you should see when you open up your code editor to edit the actual script. So I'm using visual studio to edit the code. Now, what you would do if you wanted it to code it yourself is just load in the images and cycle through them. But in the description, I'll also have some demo code as well. So what you want to do is just go down there and copy and paste like so. So this is the code that would be in the description. Click Control S to save, exit out your code editor. And now what you want to do after it's reloaded is just go to the dialogue manager script and drag it onto the canvas. And you should see the dialogue manager script on the actual canvas when you select it. Now from here, you for dialogue text, you want to drag in the text. For character image, you just want to drag in the actual image finally drag in the faces that you've made into their respective places. Once that's all done, if I now click play and then click on the space bar, you should be able to see the image and the text as well. And I'm going to click space again and one more time. And that's it. You've successfully recreated the persona style character portraits in ComfyUI and Unity. Now that's all. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.